to and moving it to a date specific determined by the chairman where and when it will be uh, action taken under veto. The rules also indicate from the receipt which is acknowledged today, I have five days uh, of a waiting period before I put it on the agenda and no more than 30. So please focus today's testimony on the process of what is on the agenda. There is no debate or discussion from the members. My plan is calling the meeting to order. We will take a roll call. We get an approval of the agenda and I will then take public comment. But I want to make sure you understand what is on the table today is uh, the mayor's veto to set a date and time specific uh, to discuss that veto. There will be no voting by council members today. Okay, Mr. Hoosier? Just a uh, process, because of the noise out here, uh, I, I'm having even a hard time hearing, so I think everybody should speak as loudly. I don't know if we can turn the volume up on the uh, microphones or not, but I, I believe that might be an issue with the noise and yeah, thank you. I think that's a good point. And let me also apologize. We have uh, our air conditioning people working on the chill water uh, for today. So uh, as long as we maintain our temperaments, we can probably maintain the room temperature. So on that note, Mr. Kogawa, you wanted the floor? No? Okay, again, I want to make sure you understand that there will be no discussion from the mayors. The business today is the veto that was laid on the table. So um, to the clerk, may I ask, um, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, start uh, today's uh, meeting with a roll call. This is to call the meeting to order. Councilmember Bynum. Here. Councilmember Hooser. Present. Councilmember Kagawa. Present. Councilmember Raposo. Here. Councilmember Yukimura. Here. Council Chair Fofaro. Present. Six present. Thank you. We have six present of a six member body at this time. Um, I would like to get an approval of the agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Kagawa, Mr. Raposo. Any discussion members? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, on that note, I would like to. Um, Remind you of the communication today. I guess we should read that communication, please. The, the six people, the public comment. Yeah, but first, I think we just want to read the communication, reiterating what's really on the agenda today. So the communication on the agenda today is C-2013-363, a communication from the mayor submitting his veto of bill number 2491, draft two, relating to pesticides and genetically modified organisms. Thank you. So it's the veto that's on the agenda. And I would like to now go to public comment. Do we have a number of people that have signed up? Yes, we have three. Uh, we have six people signed up for the public comment period pursuant to our agenda item number D. The Before first you go any further, I believe someone who signed up wants to show a video, okay? I would like you to let you know again, I will permit that today. But in the future, in our procedures, the video presentations need to tie to the agenda item. The agenda item is the, the veto override not about uh, crops and so forth uh, as you see it, okay? But I'm going to allow it to the clerk's office, okay? But please, everybody understand, I'm making exceptions as the chair, but we do have rules, very old rules, that we need to follow process on. Okay, call up the first speaker. The first speaker is Ray Catania, followed by Jason Ladera. Ray, you need the, the button. Good morning. My name is Raymond Catania. I'm from Puhi. I'm also a member of the Hawaii Government Employees Association. And there have been a number of us that uh, support uh, Bill 2491. And we have an open letter that uh, I want to read to you. 
on the bottom of the letter you have copies or a list of, is a list of names of some of the members you might even know them and I'll start it off we support bill 2491 and are members of the Hawaii Government Employee Association the following is not the union's position but the opinion of some members from Kauai who also see the importance of advocating for an environmentally healthy and safe workplace and community. Mayor Carvalho's October 31st, 2013 veto of Bill 2491 put his personal concerns about possible litigation over the health and welfare of the people. His disclosure of the county's legal assessment was negligent and improper and puts the industrial ag interests at an advantage. Responding to the concerns of Kauai's people, the Kauai County Council voted wisely 6 to 1 to pass the amended version of the bill earlier in the month. The bill calls for mandated pesticide disclosure, an environmental impact study, and very moderate buffer zones in the most sensitive areas like schools and hospitals. There is no logic or rationale to the industry's threat that the measures outlined in the bill will lead to massive layoff of workers. We support the workers of these companies and their right to work in a safe environment. As voting public worker unionists, family people, and active members of this community, we see no contradiction in having decent jobs and a healthy community to live in. We encourage our county council members, the majority who spend untold hours studying the issues and ramifications of the bill from many perspectives, including that of the industry, to override the mayor's veto. We are in solidarity with the many doctors, nurses, teachers, kupuna and youth, kanaka Maoli, cultural practitioners, farmers, environmentalists, fishermen, mothers, surfers, hunters, and labor unions that came together to work on and support this bill. Thank you. Mahalo, Ray. Yeah. Our next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jason Ladera, followed by Malia Chun. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. My name is Jason Ladero. I was born and raised on the island of Kauai. My father grew up in Kilio. My mother grew up in Koloa, next to the sugar mill. I went to the service, serve our country. But you know what brought me back to the island? The people, the love, the land. For me, this is a special place. 50 years ago, 100 years ago when the petition was around, a lot of the people never know the dangers about this large agro chemical pesticide use. But now we know. You know, yesterday was yesterday, today is today. I'm asking you guys to override this mayor's veto because you guys love the, the land, the island. Ask yourself, why did you guys take office, why? to represent the people, Kauai, the future of Kauai. I read it every year, election season, on these little postcards that come to my mailbox. Um, you guys said it. Follow through, override this mayor's bill. Repres you guys don't represent an anti outside entity. You guys represent the people, the future of Kauai. I'm an avid outdoorsman. The mountains, streams, oceans all provide for me and my family. My sons, my daughters, they hunt, they fish. I want that for the future of them. You know, I want them to experience the lifestyle I experience. This touches deep with me. I have families on the west side. You know, one of my cousins right here in the back room from the west side, nieces, nephews. But you guys six right here hold the key for the future of Kauai. So do the right thing, override this mayor's veto, and do right as Pono for Kauai. Thank you. Thank you. And may I just say uh, thank you for your People service. To the the west side. We're back in order in two minutes. I want to share with one of the speakers here that I had been advised that although I have made the exception on the video, it is legally not wise to have the video shown on an item that's about the agenda for uh, the veto. 
and I do not want these procedures overridden because of what could be a complaint. So whoever is planning to uh, present the video, may I say on the date that I choose, somebody needs to get the, a housekeeping item cleaned up here. Okay. Um, that uh, when I choose to identify the date, I will be accepting that video at that time. So I, I just want to be, um, I want to follow protocol here, so I hope you understand. Okay, our next speaker was. Next speaker is Malia Chun, followed by Ray Songtree. <clears throat> Aloha, my kako. Aloha. I am Malia Chun from Kikaha. First, I would like to express my gratitude to each and every one of you. All of you council members who have supported 2491 and have seen it through to this day. Your tenacity, time, and dedication to serving the people of Kauai and protecting our health and well-being will be your legacy. On behalf of the many West Side Ohana that could not be here, I would like to encourage you to continue to be brave and listen to the plea of the majority of the tax-paying voting citizens of this island who feel it is a basic human right to know and protect ourselves and our ohana from restricted-use pesticides. Allowing the mayor to veto this bill and defer the kuleana of protection and accountability to the state is like sending an abused child back to their abuser. Although I am part Hawaiian, the rest of my ancestry, Chinese, Portuguese, and Filipino, were plantation workers as well, like many of you sitting here. And while many of the local values that we grew up with stem from plantation life, that area had a devastating impact, as Brother said, on our natural environment, one that we have not recovered from today. This pales in comparison to the 18 tons of restricted use pesticides that biotech companies expose us to on a yearly basis on our tiny island of Kauai. Make no mistake, this is not the agriculture of our ancestors. My plea to each of you is to not make a decision based on fear or threats or one that is motivated by money. Have faith that when you do what is pono, pono will prevail and you will have the support of the greater community, lawyers, doctors, educators, fishermen, mothers, fathers, keiki, and yes, mahi'ai, farmers, that plant food for human consumption. Mayor Kavaya has one year left to his term, but if allowed to veto, the repercussions will be felt, heard, and witnessed long after his term is up. The effects will be multi-generational. Your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. We are Kamavailua Lanimoku. Moku Omano Kalanipo. And we have always taken a deep pride in protecting our island and its people. You know, your three minutes have. Uh, okay, ended. Kalamai, almost Paul, and our okay. natural resources. So please help us to continue to fulfill this legacy that is Kauai's alone. Mahalo Nui. Thank you, and thank you for reminding us of the ancient name of Kauai. So. The next, speaker, please. the next speaker is Ray Songtree, followed by Josh Mori. Hey, Ray Songtree, good morning. Um, thank you again for your service. You last till 3.30 in the morning. I went home at midnight, so I really appreciate your work. Really impressed. Uh, the New York Times business.
this, this council is back in order. And uh, we will continue uh, taking testimony. To the clerk, I would like you to let me know when we come to the testimony that will be regulated in <coughs> one minute. Yes, sir. Thank you. The next speaker is William Ash, followed by <coughs> Meredith Murphy. Just press it in front. My name is William Ash. I'm registered voter. I've been here with you in some form or another through this entire endeavor. We're helping keep support for the people in this or doing some kind of whatever it takes. I didn't realize that little boy was even hurt. He was down next to the next to the curb and he came up to me with a bubble wand and we sat there and blew bubbles for a minute, but I had no idea how and what was wrong with him. And somehow through this discovery process, this thing that has come up to you, I believe it's very similar. These people that run these chemical slash pharmaceutical companies are not good neighbors. They're taking advantage of the workers and the people who live on the west side, hard working, honest people. They're using every political tact they possibly can to cloud the issues and to try to have their way and to keep on doing what they want to do. These people depend upon you to do <coughs> what is right by them, and I know it's going to be a hard decision. I was there when the mayor made his announcement, and I saw what happened. I don't know why it happened that way. I don't know why the mayor made the decision. I am very disappointed in him. And I'm hoping that you will take action and help us in this matter. Please overturn the mayor's veto. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Meredith Murphy, followed by Walter Reedy. Hi, I'm Meredith Murphy. Thank you for taking this time. Uh, I please implore you to quash the mayor's inaction to override the fact that he did not sign. We need to have our voices heard as the people, the citizens, the taxpayers of Kauai. We need to keep the destiny of our future in our hands at county level, not depending on the state or federal to take care of it. What the chemical companies are doing is so questionable. I implore you to move ahead and pass the bill in overriding the mayor's lack of a signature. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Walter Reedy, followed by Stephanie Ortega. <clears throat> Aloha, council members. <clears throat> My name is Walter Reedy from the island of Molokai. Um, first of all, I want to say mahalo for, for passing the bill. Um, great job, lots of hard work. Um, listening to the people, giving hope throughout the whole state that democracy actually works. It was really a, a good deal. So you guys placed some regulations over an industry that really needs regulating because they're on all the islands. And today we're here because of the politics. Um, the mayor, I guess, flexed his muscle and said no. Um, and maybe they can solve it by joining forces with the state, which none of us really believe. So his veto was a surprise and pretty outrageous and reflected badly on all of your hard work. I mean, I couldn't believe that the work that you did and he just vetoed the, the whole bill. Um, but his veto is part of the democratic process, and that's why we're here today. Um, now, you can defend your council's decision by simply getting six unanimous votes and overriding his veto. And that's what everybody's hoping for, um, that you guys stand your ground and defend what you guys have done. This is, has nothing to do with whether or not the bill is good or not. It's just whether or not you're going to follow the lead of the mayor or follow your own lead. So we're hoping that you guys will stand your ground and override this veto. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. The next speaker is Stephanie Ortega, followed by Clayton Kubo.
Aloha. My name is Stephanie Ortega. I graduated from Hawaii Pacific University with a degree in public relations in 2008. It was Miss Congeniality Hawaii 2008. I lived in Kona and Oahu for seven years. I miss September 2014, Babes Against Biotech. I wasn't sure if I should testify today because I'm living on Kauai for only a couple months. I live in Colorado. But I feel obligated to speak up for Kauai as a resident of the Hawaii state. I feel obligated to speak up for the future generations of our keiki. I feel obligated to speak on behalf of the tourists that visit this paradise. I am the voice of all the people that love Hawaii around the world. The world is watching and listening, and they are tuned in to what decisions are made here today. From a public relations standpoint, I don't have to tell you that this is bad publicity. As a PR professional, I advise you to override the veto and pass the bill to save your visitor industry. The contribution of tourism made to the economy of Hawaii far surpasses the agriculture of these GMO chemical companies. GMO chemical companies pay no state general excise tax since they sell no product here. Only export seeds and open air ex experimentation on us. They receive numerous tax breaks from a federal government and owe over 100000 in taxes to this county. We all have a right to know what pesticides are being sprayed, what time they spray, and how the spraying affects the residents here in Kauai. In my opinion, the importance of this issue doesn't just affect the island of Kauai. It doesn't just affect the state of Hawaii. It affects the world as a whole. This past year, I lost my father to intestinal cancer. The year prior to that, I lost my brother to congenital heart disease. Seven years prior to that, my grandmother to lymphoma cancer. Why are our mothers, fathers, families dying from cancer? Why are our children born with birth defects? The courageous mother who just spoke with her son who has heart defects, I pray for. I pray his future and hope his fate is different from that of my brother's. This affects the future generations of the world. All we ask is that these companies disclose what they're spraying and what genetic traits they're experimenting with. I'm here to ask for a unanimous override to the mayor's veto. This is our kuleana. Please do what's right. Mahalo for your time. Thank you. <coughs> next speaker. The next speaker is Clayton Kubo, followed by Allison Thalman. How's it, council members? <coughs> uh, Clayton Kubo, Waimea Kauai. I kind of heard some heart-wrenching testimonies yet today. And even me right now, I see kind of my pool by, it's kind of really, really hot aching right now. Either way, whichever way going to go, okay? No hot feelings to nobody, especially you guys, the people outside. But this has been too long. We need something done. Yeah, and the state, I don't know how they're going, you know, even though it's December 1st, you know, like, I had one talk with somebody last night, yeah, they went busted out to me, and we need to clarify this about the, the what is that, notifications, yeah, they're not telling us what they're spraying, they're only telling us when they're going to spray, you know, we're talking three weeks straight. They've been blowing. Evening, morning, you know, when, you know, we're doing all this. I think about it and I say to myself, we do all this, all this effort, just forget protection. <coughs> you know, the, to people that really need the protection. You know, and there is people out there that need the protection, there's no doubt. You know, my heart tells me that for many, many years now. And it seems like we always got to battle either the state, now it's the county, you know, the mayor, you know, the companies, you know, who, who going to be next? 
You know, we need, please, think from you guys' hearts, and we need, definitely, we need some help. Okay? Because there is people out there, and, you know, anecdotal, whatever, people keep saying, there is kids, there is people out there, adults, that need help. Okay, we is in one fire line. <coughs> fire line, Waimea. It's just kekaha, kokala, kamakani. You know, we need help. You know, I don't know where else you guys going to look for, you know, the proof. I have no idea. But for me, it's many, many years already. And we got to get some help. And I say it to you guys now, you know, yeah, I'm being very emotional. But we need some help. Okay? And it's in you guys' hands. I don't know what else, you know, what else you guys give me in you guys' brain. We need help, major help. You know, even if, please do something. Please do something. Okay. That was your... Oh, that my three minutes is up. Yes. Oh, I know what he But I, I, I do want to tell you that uh, I confirmed your comments there about the notice for 21 straight days of spraying, and I have done a cover letter, yeah. and I'm saying, is this what we can expect? And I think so that... I, you know, I, Mr. I, Fofaro, it's all there, you know. I just want to let you know I wrote that particular company. Uh, and don't get me wrong, you know, no matter what happens, I love everybody working for these companies. I love them all. You know, that's, that's it. I just see it doing with what I got, I got to do. That's all. Thank and you. please, do what you guys got to do is right. Thank you. The next speaker is Allison Thalman, followed by Kathy Haskins. Aloha. I'm sorry, your first name is Allison? My name is Allison Thalman. Allison. Aloha. Good afternoon, council members, um, and mahalo for allowing us all to speak today. Um, this is my first time actually giving testimony, and I am a babe against biotech. Um, I support the override of Bill 2491 veto, um, and I am here as a 31-year-old female and future mother. Um, I have been in Kauai for two and a half years. I currently live in Princeville. I moved here as a travel therapist, working at Garden Isle Rehab as an occupational therapy assistant, working with Arkapuna. Um, I have had the privilege of working with some of the most beautiful and sweetest people I have ever known in my entire life. There was a very special bond created between us and with our culture, um, learning and, and gaining new knowledge on different cultures and ethnicities and backgrounds. Um, and a lot of our conversations were centered around food and different dishes from their home. These kapun I speak of touch my heart and my soul, and I'm very honored to have been there to help them through hard times. I love my patients and their families, and I want to always fight for them and to be an advocate for those that cannot speak or hear any, or uh, use their voices or feelings. These kapuna worked on the sugarcane fields. Their stories brought me to tears, and um, some of these family members now reside in the west side and work for the ag companies. Um, whether they do or not, I still, I still entirely support every single person in this room. I'm not trying to be um, overbearing as far as my side. I just love people. Um, and I feel that there is a lot of uneducated people on the topic of toxicity and what's taking over our world. And I feel that what we are really putting in our bodies is not really healthy stuff. What are we doing? We need to know what's in our food. We need to know what chemicals are being sprayed and what's going in our bodies so people don't get sick or people can get better, providing better health care, better food for our people. Um, I learned in my profession the importance of trust, ethics, love, kindness, and most importantly, the impact of healthy nutrition on our human bodies. Our bodies are our temples and our vessels of creation. We need to treat them with respect and love, and we have to override this bill. We have the right to know we are human beings. There's an uproar of illnesses here, as well as around the country, from increases in diabetes, ADD, autism, obesity, cancer, respiratory, the list goes on. We are not going to sit back and do nothing. We need to pass this bill. We need to complete more studies on the effects of GMOs and restricted use pesticides and what they have on humans and not by experimenting without disclosure or regulations. This bill is to give us buffer zones and disclosure. This is a simple bill. Please pass. 
There's also an outrageous amount of people, including my father-in-law, who worked and fought for our country in Vietnam. Our country that contract, uh, many contracted cancer being exposed to Agent Orange, which I hear is on this island um, through Coconut Wireless, of course. Um, we need to know. Disclosure. How many veterans do you know have had similar reactions? We need to learn from our past and help the present and future. Thank you very much. Please pass the bill. Thank you. Thank you. The next, the next speaker is Kathy Haskins, followed by Chad Pa. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Kathy Haskins. I'm a resident of Kekaha, and um, I support the mayor's veto of this bill. And I, I'd like to recall something that he wrote in his opinion, and it's not word for word, but it was to the effect that he is the chief executive officer of this county, and as such, he took an oath to uphold the laws of this county, of the state, and of the United States of America. And I respect that opinion. I don't know what kind of oath you folks took, um, but I do know that you're here to represent all of the people of the county of Kauai. And I know that the county attorney gave you advice that this law was not defensible in court, yet you still passed it. And I don't know why. Maybe in fear from the misguided and very vocal minority of your constituents, but I'd like to urge you to do the right thing and to uphold the mayor's veto for the majority of your constituents and protect the taxpayers of this county. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Chad Pa, followed by Nathan Dickinson. Hello, my Kako, council members. Um, my name is Chad Pa. Um, if I seem a little emotional because it really hits home to me, speaking on behalf of um, my girlfriend and my unborn son. And um, she can't be here, but I'm just going to share you guys the story that's going on with me. And um, my son has a condition called gastroesophagus. Basically, the stomach's on the outside when it's born. So I had to fly her up to Arizona. I've been without her for two months working, trying to figure out, you know, what causes this, all this different kind of research. I've been doing it just on my own. You know, and I came across four other friends of mine that had the same condition. And it just breaks my heart that I have to go through this. I don't come here to point fingers. Don't come here to, like, fight. I don't want, you know, to segregate anybody. But something's wrong with this. And there's, there's so much coincidences. I mean, so you couldn't perform the surgery. And so she's up there. I'm just trying to read this. Sorry. It's been more commonly found in the islands of Hawaii and there have been several studies and scientists who directed gastroesophagus with a chemical called um, astrazines they, they're doing some I love to provide my resources and they say that the chemical is sprayed more here on this island than anywhere else in the world and when they did the studies the women there's a study from Washington where the women in the area of 60 mile radius it was like one in eight thousand. Now it's like one in three thousand. The condition, and so you guys voted six to one before, and I love the support for that. Beyond thankful, and just hope you guys take care of the iron on our our children, so we don't have to go through this. Maybe it's too late for my son, but maybe we can educate someone else. And you know, I wish I'm a Hawaiian studies major at university. I got my bachelor at Hawaii at University of Hawaii, and I wish we could go back to Konohiki days and. You know, when everything was non-pesticide, non-GMO, and just, you know, the whole system was perfect. And, but we can't. We're too involved in the Western system. And right now, it's just, I just, maybe we can share with the future generations of, of what, what we're actually sharing, spraying out here. And I'm just speaking on behalf of my girlfriend, the one born son. I just, I don't blame anybody, but I just want to stop the poisoning. Just educate somebody. Something's wrong here. I just want to stop this. If, put yourself in my shoes. I got to go move to Arizona. I don't even know I'm from Kaliwai. I got to go up there and bring a baby into the world that's got to get cut open right away. 
I don't, I got to do fundraisers right now, laulos. It's hard. And I just want to come here and share my story that I don't want to point fingers, but just consider this, that something might be wrong on this island. Okay? Something might be wrong. This is, children don't deserve this. Okay? Thank you guys. Speaker. The next speaker is Nathan Dickinson, and that ends our three-minute round, Chair. We're on the one-minute round yeah. now? He's, He's the, the last, last speaker. You're the last of the three-minute round. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. Um, you know, my name is Nathan Dickinson. I'm from Waimea Valley. You guys heard my wife's testimony a few years back about my son. You know, it's got the brain bleed with seizures, you know. All I'm asking is for you guys to use your hearts, make one right decision, because how much more children got to deal with this? Look at this guy, he just said, give his testimony. Yeah? How much more children got to go through this? You know? My, my son, not the only kid in the valley, they get the same thing that he get the brain bleeds and the seizures and they don't know where it's coming from, you know. So that's why it's important that this, this bill needs to pass, you know. We need studies to be done. I mean, look at that guy. Put yourself in his shoes. Put yourself in my shoes when you got to deal with somebody that we don't kid that, you know. You don't know what it's going to be like day to day, you know. Their health. Of course, we don't know what everything's going to be like day to day, but their health, like, it's not guaranteed, you know. There's things that can be done by lessening the use of pesticides. But first, we got to know what kind of pesticides are there. So if they get sick, we know how to treat them, you know. How are we, how are we supposed to treat them if we don't know, you know. And my last thing is we got to start taking care of them. We gotta start taking care of our, our island. I mean, we live on an island. We don't live on the mainland, you know. We live on a small island. We gotta take care of this place. What is our children gonna have, you know? When are we gonna leave there? Their children, you know. So, like Clayton said, use your guys' hearts. Please, when you make this decision. And, and I thank you guys for making a decision before. So it shouldn't be hard to make that decision again. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, by our rules, we ended our three-minute speakers. Now we've amended our rules to accommodate everyone to one-minute testimony. So who is our first one-minute speaker? The first one-minute speaker is Ka'iolani Edens. Hi, I'm Ka'iolani Edens. You guys know me. We went to school together. I call you auntie. My mom worked with you. I'm in Hawaii, illegally occupied by the U.S., of which you are the administrative entity. Two to 500 visitors a day at Koke'e Natural History Museum, and they ask me what's going on here as objectively as I can from what I know. Because I'm kind of on outside of this fight. Most of them say they would not have come here had they known that this was occurring on this island. And they're disappointed that they've spent money to be here when this is happening in a place, inappropriate place to be happening. We never thought we'd be facing this. Kayulani, I have to tell you, please summarize, that was your one minute. Yeah. 
But I just want you to remember what we had, Auntie. What kind of beach we swam at, Mel. Our kids, we ran through the cane fields. Nobody got hurt. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, speaker. Next speaker is Christy Dima. Uh, I moved and I worked all day and ran. And down here, just you and all of you in the eye last time to override the, camps, the meager protections that this bill offers. I don't believe that the companies will ever give their forced to. I don't believe they'll give 500 buy zones unless they're forced to. And so I'm here one more time begging you to please override the mayor's veto. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is someone who was in the queue from this morning, so he will get three minutes. The next speaker is John. Thank you for hearing my testimony. My name is John Parzielli. I'd like to start off with a first-hand account of an agricultural chemical poisoning of children on Kauai. Um, not a hypothetical one. Fourteen years ago, um, I went to Wilcox Memorial Hospital um, after being gently um, by agricultural chemicals. I know that because I was there and I saw some of those children into the emergency room at Wilcox Hospital. Burning eyes, burning lungs, and uh, struggled children, and I really believe that if, if I, I wouldn't wish those images on anyone, but I really believe that your job and your choice today would be a lot easier if you saw what I saw on that day. The second point that I really wanted to speak to in my testimony was that this community is behind you a politically aware constituency that's not going away. Okay? We are we are we are behind you and aside from this issue becoming like a litmus test and not just your yes or no votes, but all of your actions that surround this bill um, will be remembered. But I hope that you won't just think of your political career, but instead of your, as, of your legacy as human beings with a historic opportunity to create change. Okay, because, you know, it's, you know, you, you all solidarity with countless other communities in the fighting to protect the health of their, their people and their environment. And, you know, if, if a company can sue for their spray next to schools and to keep their toxic cocktails of, of uh, toxins secret, if they can sue and they can win, then there's something wrong with that. There's something fundamentally wrong with that. And we need to change that. And that this And I thank you again for the, to speak to you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, John. Our next uh, one-minute speaker is Alex Hawk, followed by Lilana Wong. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Hawk. I'm from Kilauea. I want to thank you for passing the bill. Um, you guys all realize this is for us. This is for our children. We can't be bullied by these big companies. They're going to keep, but I'm glad you guys are listening to us for our health, everybody's health. I realize people are afraid to lose their jobs, but just the fact that the companies are afraid to disclose what they're doing. So thank you. I hope you override the veto. Aloha. Thank you. This is Leilana Wong, followed by Tapu Laughlin. Aloha, my name is Leilana Wong. I am 11 years old from Kauai. Um, I 
My sisters have had stomach problems since the day they were born, and we have took them to Honolulu, ER, um, all, and many doctors, and none of them knew what was going on with them. And my dad, we almost lost him twice because of stomach problems as well. The doctors did not know what was going on. And my, I want to know my family on the west side, my sisters, my dad, my children will be safe. And I want to, I want... And I want to know, and I ask you to override the veto. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Tapu Laughlin, followed by Nanea Marston. Your Honor, I come from Tahiti. Your Honor. Your Honor. Bonjour. I am married to Mahina Nani, and we live on the North Shore in Hanalei. I come to support the France, Barca Fern, and all this movement. I just wanted to say that similar case in Tahiti, when the nuclear and all of this came to Tahiti, and um, whatever the decision they took today, many years after, many decades, plenty, plenty of our generations have cancer, thyroid, I lost my father, I mean many, many cases, so I just wanted to say there's a similarity, maybe not as dangerous or whatsoever, but for you guys, such a beautiful place and such a paradise that for me who comes from Tahiti, it's probably the most islander. So the only thing I wanted to say is, as a songwriter, as a singer, sometimes I'm inspired, sometimes I just... But when I lay at night, I pull the blankets of my two children, two boys. One minute. And you're looking through their eyes, it's just like, it takes you to another dimension. So the only thing I wanted to say was to you people, decision makers. I don't want to point fingers here, but look far down and listen to that voice. Because you be inspired to listen to that voice. Maruru Yorana, merci. Merci. Je vais le plage parce que le bac sont bien, hein? Ah bon? Merci. The next speaker is Nanea Marston, followed by John Tyler Craig. Hello, I know I only have one minute now. So. I guess I sit here feeling pretty defeated. I've lost a lot of faith in our government, a lot of faith in our elected officials. Uh, I'm disappointed for a lot of the weaknesses of our system, and I can't imagine what Hawaiians must have felt like during the overthrow of our kingdom, always maintaining hope that, rights, that wrongs would be made right. This bill asks our right to know, and I don't understand how anyone could not grant us that. How can you go home tonight and sleep knowing that you could have made a difference. How can there be so much overwhelming support and you guys not hear our cries? To think for a second that they, these chemical companies, will cooperate, play nice, and suddenly tell us the truth is a joke and make especially uh, the mayor look like a fool, being fools. These chemical companies come here uh, and they bank on the fact that we, or you guys, are not smart enough to know the difference in that. To them, we are but modern-day savages for ourselves what we want, what is safe or good for our ohana and our aina. That's Thank all you. I have. Thank you. The next speaker is John Tyler Craig, followed by our last registered speaker, Andrew Kabibi. Hi, ladies and My name is John Tyler Craig, and I have a project that you've probably seen all across the island, Dr. Down. For the first two years of that program, uh, I was spearheading that, and I went up against a lot of different what if someone could do something with this, blah, blah, blah. But I knew in my head, I knew what to do, and I could help save lives. And to right now, there's over. I think 50 or 60 people that had their lives saved because I knew that I could help them out. So I'm speaking directly to Ross Kagawa and Mel Raposo, two of you gentlemen. Uh, Mel, I've heard that you've been a police officer as well too and you have the duty right now 
now the possibility to really look into the future and save people's lives from a lot of torment and, and pain in their bodies. I ask you and I ask Mr. Kagawa to really think that you can be true leaders where the mayor has not been a leader. He has looked to the, the legal opinions that were flawed that we've seen. One minute. And I'm asking you guys to say you can save lives and go beyond what the legalities possibly thought they could do. You can do it. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you all. I do want to thank you on behalf of the county for the work is much appreciated, especially on our island bad outcomes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. It's my heart, and I'm glad you guys are voting from your hearts as well. Got it. Mr. Uh, John? Yes. Just during that process, county attorney opinions that said, during the, you aware of county attorney opinions that said, yes, or the, there's a liability and... Yes. That's all. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, I believe we're on our last speaker. Mr. Speaker, for one minute, is Andrew Kabibi. Aloha. How's it, Andrew? Andrew Kabibi. Um, you know, here we are. You know, I really like thank the people, you know, for their diligence in learning. And I know a lot of you did your work, did your studies, or else we wouldn't be here right now. You know, just, I just say that know your heart that you did the right thing here. And if you think you did it, then leave it. Leave it here before you leave. Put it on the doorsteps. Leave it here. Do not take it home with you. You know, because you, you will be, will be hurt. And then you got to be accountable. i just like to say one last thing about the buffers. I've been always saying, wherever I went, the buffers should be around Hawaii, One the minute. whole island, you know. Seen it, you know. Thank you, Andrew. I, one more thing, last thing. High shape around the rivers all the way around and keep the GMO slope so it doesn't drain down into our river. You know, I know it's in the oak at the water, I, I, I know, but it's your DC fish on my island, and I have to go out outer island to get water. Mahalo, you guys. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay, on, on that note, uh, that was our last uh, speaker. I'm going to call our meeting, <coughs> and we missed you. I'm sorry. One on the recent list, or the last one? Come right in. The rules are still suspended. I have not called the meeting back south. And Aloha, I'm Kat Brady. I'm the um, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs Convention. But I very am very interested in this issue. This morning the, at the plenary spoke, and he is known to this is all we have. We can't. We can't run an electric line. We can't run a pipe to somewhere else. This everything really, really precious. Everything has to be looked at like 28 karat gold. The voice of the people is really strong. The vote you've taken, I urge you to override. And Lili um, Uokalani, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, on that note, I'm going to call the meeting back to order, and I'm going to cover a couple. I'm going to ask the members a few questions as we come close. Now, um, 
given the language that we're dealing with here, a um, to override the mayor's veto, a motion would move the bill 2491. So a motion to approve Bill 2491, second drug to override the mayor's veto. That reestablishes the bill, and with five votes, it actually overrides the mayor's veto. Okay? That is the, the motion that should be uh, done. I would also like to know commentary at the table here. If members want to have want to enforce the ten minute uh, rule, and if we have many members that are going to speak, then the reality is maybe we should take a recess before we speak, because after you speak, I will actually call for the vote with a motion. So, what is your choice, Mr. Bynum? I haven't made any real public comment since the mayor's veto, and I would like to make a comment today, and the 10-minute rule would be more than okay. sufficient. Would you want to do it before the recess or Up to you, after Chair. the recess? Up to okay, you. you leave that with my discretion. <laughs> Mr. Hoosier? Yes, I, I have, obviously, uh, remarks also, and, and uh, we'll leave it to your discretion, but, uh, yeah, I, I have extended remarks, actually. This is the last time we're going to speak on this, and so... Yes. Thank you. Any uh, further comments? Mr. Chair, I guess if, if we're going to, that's 60 minutes, it's an hour of, of discussion. I'm not sure where we are on the uh, caption break. I, I, mean, I would hate to get interrupted by a caption break, so maybe it's best we take a 10-minute break or whatever you, okay. you decide, and then we can get right into it and, and conclude the meeting okay. without having to break again. Thank you for that suggestion. So I think uh, that is what we will do. Uh, I will take the caption break, and we'll allocate 15 minutes for the caption break. When we come back, because I've already called the meeting back to order, we're in session. I will recognize everyone that wishes to speak, and, it, and you will be subject to the 10-minute rule, and I will hold my comments as chair for last. Acceptable? Okay, we're gonna, it's five to four, we're gonna break till ten after four. We're in recess.